And he said, hey, you're going to live to be a hundred. I said, don't say that. I said, I'm not going to live to be no hundred. I go, <laughs> I, go, I did. I made it. <laughs> you make every day count. Every day is a good day. Uh, being active is one thing. We, we never were idle. Uh, once we got big enough, we walked miles blueberrying in the summer, out Lake Road. Hello, I'm Tom Murphy. Welcome to Land and Sea. Maybe it's the blueberries, the fish, the salt air, or rural living. Whatever the reason, Nova Scotia has a much higher number of 100-year-olds than almost anywhere else in the country. In this episode, Colleen Jones meets some Nova Scotians who've made it to the Century Club, and she looks into some of the fascinating work researchers are doing around healthy aging. If you were born in 1917 or earlier, it was simpler times. More manual labor, what you ate, you grew. You likely had your own cow. A horsepower engine was literally the horse. This is the life you were born into in 1917. Compare that to 2017. Life is busy and mostly urban. We move at a lightning fast pace. Fast food, fast cars, fast living, and everything is just a click away. Life today seems much easier, yet somehow more complicated. So what are the lessons we can learn from the people born a century ago? Because let's face it, if you could live healthily to 100, well, who wouldn't want to do that? I want to give you the latest numbers from Statistics Canada because they really paint quite a picture. Right now in Canada, there are 5,825 centenarians. That's up from the previous census of 4,635. That rate of growth is 25.7%. It is the second highest rate of growth for any age group in the Canadian population. And guess what? There's no slowing down. By 2031, they're projecting there'll be 17,000 centenarians, and by 2061, 80,000. Here in Nova Scotia right now, there are 305 centenarians. That's a high number, much higher than the national average. Let's meet some of our superagers. We'll take you to northern Nova Scotia. Helen Ward and Gertrude MacDonald are centenarian sisters. Their combined age is 202. I think I can truly say I was never bored. <laughs> You've never been bored? No. no. In Lunenburg, it's a town that boasts several hundred-year-olds. Kate Creaser is in the Century Club. I love life because I like to go to old-time old time music. And I'd sit there and I'd go like this. Yeah. <laughs> and I just love it. And some of the people look at me and they get mad because I'm uh, acting off. <laughs> We'll visit Esther Shute in Annapolis Valley. She's 104. Keep busy, keep busy. <laughs> do the things you like to do. Then there's Bill Cox. You wouldn't know by looking at him, but he's a few months shy of his 100th birthday. He lives in Shelburne in the house his grandfather built. Bill was born right here in this very kitchen. There were some long-lived people in my family, a, a second cousin of mine. Died just a few years ago at 101. My great grandfather lived to be in his 90s. J.J. Cox, the merchant who was brother of my father, he was 99 when he passed away. The Cox family originally arrived in the Shelburne Port when the Loyalists arrived in 1783. And to this day, the Cox name is anywhere you want to look. Their old grocery store used to be the only one in town and here at their boat shed, the family shipyard. Even this quiet lane is named after them. This was the town Bill was born into, October 6, 1917, and this was the world. In the Morning Chronicle, the Halifax paper, the headlines were all about the Great War and the battle in Flanders, a tumultuous time to come into the world but young Bill and his brothers were cushioned from the blood of the battlefield. Shipbuilding has been in Bill's blood and his family for six generations. They ran Harley S. Cox and Son's shipyard. Their specialty, wooden fishing boats and scallop draggers. Ransom Wall. Ransom Wall, yeah. Clarence George, 
Cecil Jackson. A lot of these guys aren't alive now. No. Archie Harris is. John Crow, of course, up here. Yep. And Charles, Hem and Charles uh, Herbert. Herbert. Yep. That's quite a crew. His son, Ronnie, lives just down the street. When did you move up to that shop? When, when did you uh, come up from Bell's Cove? Was that 1960 you moved up there? Uh, 1960, I think, yes. Yeah. Their yeah. thoughts go back yeah, to the family's boat building days. Yeah. I supervised the building of these longboats when I was 91. That's right, he was still working at 91. And take a look at this. Does this look like a 100-year-old going down the stairs? He's almost as old as the house. Not many of us will make it to 100. Imagine a century of living. Imagine all the changes you've lived through, although he doesn't embrace them all. I think that's the stupidest thing they ever proposed. What? Driverless cars, my land. How are accidents ever going to be avoided? It's like he's turned back the clock. What he believes has kept him healthy are the simple things, and we've heard it all before exercise, family and friends, and a healthy diet. Some of it's inherited, but uh, we had a, uh, always had lots of vegetables, and as I said before, we had a, had a cow, always had lots of milk. Uh, the three of us boys could pretty well punish two quarts of milk in a meal, <laughs> and uh, that helped too, make stronger bones, I'm sure. The fish man came to the house two days a week, and oh, did I mention he was fearless, awarded the British Empire Medal for Bravery during the Second World War. He was serving on this ship, HMCS Saint Laurent. They were crossing the Atlantic in a convoy. This was not a life spent on a rocking chair watching the world go by. Bill was in the middle of it all. The submarine noticed this and came back, tried to get in a position to torpedoes, and they, they fired two depth charges from the starboard depth charge throwers uh, after we cut ahead of it a ways, and they exploded, set them at 50 feet, they exploded right under the submarine, practically lifted out of the water, and that stopped it. So then we stopped and picked up some of the survivors. All those memories, 100 years worth, he calls himself a lucky man. It's a great privilege, <laughs> yeah. What do you think the secret for him is? I think he's been active all his life. I think he's been moving. He's kept moving. He hasn't stopped. So that's probably the biggest thing that keeps him going is the fact that he, he doesn't stop. Active and always moving. Is that one of the keys? It seems to be. Coming up, we're going to look at what Nova Scotia researchers are studying and looking at when it comes to exercise and the brain. That's when Land and Sea continues. Here in Nova Scotia, we have a high rate of healthy 100-year-olds. Why is that? Is it strictly genetics or something in the land and sea? In this quiet village of La Have, not much has changed in the last 100 years. This is where Kay Creaser grew up. That's my sisters and my oh, mother. Oh, no. That's your mother, That ma she made it to 95. Yeah, that's my mom, 70 year old. You're a year old there? Yeah, I was a year old. There you are. That was in 1917, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was. That's a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Colleen, I'm telling you. That's yeah. so adorable. <laughs> I have no secrets. The only thing I can tell you, don't sit around. Work. I, I worked hard on a little bit of everything. I used to nurse. I used to go help people with their babies. And uh, there's three or four girls in here that I helped to bring them in the, wor in the world. And uh, I, I did about a little bit of everything. Her family had homemade recipes for health. Yeah, uh, kind of oil, uh, and molasses, and onions. And you put it on the back of the stove and leave it there for days and days. And every night you take a tablespoonful, that, but that, that was a physic. Did it taste good? Not so good. <laughs> Not that, not so good. But still, all you took it, the molasses was all right. You didn't mind the molasses. 
Esther Shute is days away from her 104th birthday. She admits she isn't as mobile as she used to be and just moved into a senior's home in Kentville. When she was 100, she was inducted into the North American Hall of Fame for square dancing. I think it's a good exercise. That's why I started. Well, I needed something for exercise and I joined the square dance. That's what I did. Exercise and movement is vital. At Acadia University's kinesiology department, Dr. Saeed McCary is fascinated by aging and how to age well. Good. He's the director of the Acadia Active Aging Program. There's a waiting list to get in. It feels good once we're here. <laughs> feels excellent. Three times a week, these seniors come and work with the university's kinesiology students. Ann Anderson is a regular. At 78, it's making a difference. Well, at some point in time, I had some trouble with high blood pressure, and they gave me medication, which didn't work too well. But I find that actually exercising reduces my blood pressure, so that's part of the reason I'm here. For Dr. McCary, this isn't just about helping people age better. There's research going on, and these gym rats are his test subjects. Four times a year, he puts them through a battery of tests to see what impact exercise is having on their bodies. Since it's not a test period for the seniors, he's testing me. We start with a VO2 test. You'll have this little headpiece on you with this mouthpiece in your mouth. And what it does basically, it looks at um, the oxygen consumption of the body. The idea? I run on the treadmill that gets progressively faster and harder until I hit my max. Then he has my fitness benchmark. Okay. Okay, that can be intense. Yeah. It's, it's challenging. It's not easy. And that's why some of the older adults, we have the masks. Yeah. And so that way they don't have to have it down their mouth. Yeah, great. Everyone in the program has seen gains. It's not an easy workout they do in the Acadia Active Aging program. They work on balance, core strength, and cardio. The exercise is good. Feeds the brain. Feeds the brain? That, too, is part of Dr. McCary's research. As you increase cardiovascular function through regular exercise, you're also increasing the oxygen levels that are going to your brain. And so, therefore, when you have a task in front of you or when you have to do something, the more oxygen you get to the brain, the better you should be at doing that task. So how are they testing the effects of exercise on the brain? I'm going to put this right here. Again, and I'm their guinea pig. Measure. The device they strap so to my sure forehead is key. In the way we put a black bandana on. So it's called the NEARS, a near infrared spectroscopy. And what it does, it basically looks at the oxygen levels in your brain and the CO2 that it releases, and it captures that and pitches it out on the screen. So we know how much or how hard your brain is working. You'll have a word show up on the screen. The word will be either red, green, yellow, or blue. And your job is, with one hand, press the color that's uh, associated that. with the word. Yeah. Cross equals... Color. Color. <laughs> As the test progresses, oh things get more complicated. The graph doesn't lie. We are interested in how much blood flow is going to your brain as you go through harder tests. So we want to see how well your brain can utilize the oxygen and utilize the blood flow that's going to it as you complete these. What they're finding out? The benefits of exercise on both the body and brain is huge as we age. Meanwhile, at Dalhousie Life Sciences Research Centre, Mary McLean participates in brain research at the Cognitive Health and Recovery Lab. It might look like she's just playing games, but she's doing much more than that. Uh, the goal is, of the game is to help you to focus, to use your memory and your attention. Dalhousie University's Dr. Gail Eskis is a professor and neuropsychologist. She runs the lab. Genetics gives us this program that's going to unfold as we get older. But we do know that as people get older, we see a lot of inter-individual variability. And it's that variability that researchers are trying to capitalize on in terms of understanding what makes the superagers versus what makes people who seem to get um, frail and, and uh, have dementia earlier. And that's where playing these brain training games so comes find, in. There's a lot of what goes into memory in terms of paying attention, in terms of being able to understand what, what's going on, and then being able to remember it and hold it in mind, and then being able to use it later. And so it's a really multi-stage um, ability. That's what brings Mary McLean to the lab. 
She believes these games will make a difference as she ages. Uh, I feel the more you use your brain, the better it is. It's like any body part or anything. The more you use, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. That's the challenge, is trying to figure out how to improve not only just memory, but in general, how people get along in their daily lives. Keeping their brains sharp is something centenarian sisters Helen Ward and Gertrude McDonald have instinctively done. Oh, wow. We'll head to Sutherland's River, where they might not be playing computer memory games, but they do enough puzzles to keep their brains sharp. And this, like exercise, is an important piece of the puzzle for these centenarians. That's when Land and Sea continues. Sisters Helen Ward and Gertrude McDonald live together in a small community in northern Nova Scotia. Helen will soon be 102. Gertrude just celebrated her 100th birthday. Centenarian sisters, their minds still sharp, their routine precise. Breakfast, morning dishes, then the two take their two daily newspapers and begin their solitary Sudoku. It's their daily constitution. They swear it's not a competition. Oh yeah, well sometimes she'll get it and I won't get it. <laughs> so it was 50 50. <laughs> We're not really competitive. No. <laughs> no. no. We just, uh, well, we help each other sometimes if we can't get a line or, or see if we're correct. The sisters are on to something. Researchers say Sudoku, along with crossword puzzles, has been linked to improving memory. Though at 100 and 102, they didn't need a research study to tell them that. The next line up above it. No, below it. At 219. Yeah. 437. Yeah. 586. Yep. Yep. After solving the puzzle, more brain work, they move to the card table. Time for a cutthroat game of bridge. Well, we are playing, playing bridge. Kitchen, kitchen but bridge. But you need four people to play. <laughs> we play with a lot of duplicate players, good yeah, players. duplicate players. So they're always and trying they're to help really, us out. Really, really good. Oh, you're no spades. Oh. Wow. No wonder you were bidding. <laughs> Our parents played, so we Not learned young. Years ago. <laughs> Born in 1915 and 1917, life was so much different than today's world. Things we take for granted weren't even imagined. We had no phones, we had no electricity, we had nothing like no that. No radio. No radio or anything. No electricity? No radio? What that taught Helen and Gertrude? How to make your own fun. I think I can truly say I was never bored. <laughs> You've never been bored? No. no. Like the other superagers, Helen and Gertrude's diet, real food that they grew themselves. Because we lived on a farm and we had our own milk and we had made our own butter and we had our own vegetables and all kinds of meat. And as they start their second century of living, they keep changing with the times. They're computer savvy, they pay their bills online and connect with family and friends through email. We, uh, we're always interested in everything. We recognize we're old, but we're not sitting back and letting life go by us. Remember square dancer Esther Shute, who we heard from earlier, soon to be 104? She didn't let life pass her by either. She was very much a pioneer, featured in the Home and Fireside publication. The headline, the triple role of Esther Shute. She took over the 65-acre apple farm in the Annapolis Valley after her husband died, long before women were running a business like that. Today, her hands are no longer busy picking apples, rather knitting for others. I knit mitts for all of, I don't know, I have probably 20 pairs in here. So I just set up another pair today. As she knits, she's counting stitches, remembering the patterns, details that cognitively keep her sharp. Oh, 19, uh, these are from 1941. Yeah, 1941. While there's no doubt genetics plays a huge role in getting to 100 healthily, all the superagers shared an incredibly positive outlook. And that sums up this woman, Minerva Boren. Minerva is 102, a two-stepping, hip-swinging centenarian. 
we became fascinated with Minerva when we posted this video of her dancing to Elvis on our CBC Facebook page, it quickly went viral. So we were curious, what is it about this woman that connected with so many people? Jean Robinson is the care worker who took the video scene around the world. She's inspiring so many people that think maybe they're, they can't you know, get up and dance or they can't do something at their age. And as soon as they see Minerva, it just gives them all the inspiration to get up and keep on going. As life expectancy in Canada continues to rise and the number of centenarians expected to soar, there are lessons from our 100-year-olds that we can apply to try to follow in their footsteps. We just lived an ordinary life. There was nothing just ordinary about their lives, and they're still having fun with it. That's the secret of our centenarians. Do you remember the first car, the family yep. car? <laughs> that old car. What yep. was it? Do you remember? Ford. It was a Ford. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when they bought it and you brought it home? Put your foot down on the clutch to let to, to uh, stop or, or go, you know. What was it, do you remember? It was a Chev or a Ford, which was it? One that had the plastic oh. side curtains, windows. I was the first rocking Well, was it a Ford or a Chev? I think Don't it was ask a Ford. Me. I think it was I think a Ford. Was, I think it was a Ford. Just do good things. I was always making something for somebody. I, it pleasures me to do that. It's just coming every day uh, a bonus because at our age, <laughs> you never know. 